Hi, and uh, welcome to the uh, first ever round table discussion um, as part of our Aviation Resilience Report, uh, which hopefully you've downloaded and you've got the PDF in front of you. But this is just a quick, uh, quick discussion with some of the editors um, about what you might find in it um, and, uh, and, and what's been going on in the aviation industry in the last, in the last month. Um, and, and so I've got with me Alvin Bryce, Managing Editor for Ground Handling International and uh, Air Logistics International and also Ramp Equipment News. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, and also uh, Ben Sampson, he is Editor for Business Airport International. Hi Ben. Hello. And Izzy, Izzy Kington, who is Editor for Business Jet International. Uh, hello, hi. This is just interiors, I should say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I should know that because it's on, I think there's one on the wall behind me. Anyway, uh, I'm Tom Stone. I'm editorial director at uh, MA Business, and uh, I'm just going to try and host and uh, and have a quick chat with our editors about, about what's been going on. So um, it's a very warm day here, uh, but warm August day. Normally people would be jetting off on their holidays, but um, maybe we've not been seeing quite so much of that yet this year, but we've been trying to, to, to try and uh, bring to you some of, the, uh, some of the ways in which the industry has been responding to the COVID crisis and, and building resilience for the future. So um, Ben, uh, I'll go to you first. What, what's caught your eye in, in, the, last, in the last few weeks uh, in the industry in, in, in terms of uh, you know, positive, positive news? Well, I, I thought I'd talk about uh, something that was, uh, wasn't that important pre-COVID, um, but is now very, very important, uh, and that's health and safety, uh, and primarily uh, cleaning and disinfection. It, it's something that we, we led with uh, in the last print issue of the magazine. Um, so I'm, I'm picking up on a story uh, about uh, an industry coalition, uh, which, is, to be honest, is, is one of, of several which has, which has cropped up within the last few months, um, which is putting forward best practice and um, good health and safety standards for business aviation operators and, and FBOs uh, and all types of aviation companies and people in the supply chain as well uh, about COVID-19, about best practice to, to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Uh, and and, and I, I wanted to pick up on this story for, for a few reasons. And, and number one is there's been a lot of talk about how business aviation is leading the bounce back uh, in front of commercial airlines uh, for aviation's recovery. Uh, and it's a good example of how business aviation um, has adopted these measures. So I'm talking about um, regular disinfection, I'm talking about cleaning aircraft and, and you know, touch points in, within FBOs uh, and has adopted them fast and, and been agile and flexible and is really catering for um, people admittedly that have the money and want to travel so not massive amounts of people but for the people that want to travel it can present them with an opportunity a safe opportunity to travel and that really is fundamental i've just been on holiday uh, for two weeks myself and used and used british airways um, and um, perhaps the place most at risk you felt uh, not the not so much the aircraft but but the airport itself um, where there was, although less people, lots of people. And business aviation can offer people uh, a more private, personal experience. Uh, and it can, it can restore confidence in travel. This is key. It can restore confidence in air travel before commercial aviation can. Uh, and and, and that, I, that I've noticed, I noticed during my journey to, to, to Spain that, that it was that, that that was the place where we felt most at risk was was the airport, uh, and and so I, I feel that this that the that the the industry self uh, organising and is is a is a really great thing for it to do uh, because it, it's it's demonstrating how uh, it it can it can it can bounce back first basically. These ways in which um, business aviation business airports are cleaning and uh, disinfecting and you know the the commercial sector can learn from that as well do you think you think the business business is leading the way almost in this in this this sector 
Yeah, and I, yeah, exactly that. And um, because obviously it's on a smaller scale, um, it, it, it's more, it's, in some ways, it's more achievable to clean the interior of a business jet. Uh, and because the FBOs, the, the lounges are, 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 are smaller and have less people going through them, uh, it's, it's easier to do that. Um, and of course, of course the, the passengers are higher value um, as well. So um, the, the industry to a certain extent is, is used to catering to, to these high standards of cleanliness and hygiene and, 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 and can accomplish that in, a, in an easier way than commercial aviation can. I mean, the, 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 don't get me wrong, the sector has, is experienced in tough times but it, and, and will continue to, but it, it is showing signs, clear signs of, of, of picking up uh, and bouncing back faster than commercial aviation for this reason. And, and the industry can feel proud that it's, that it's adapted to these new situ to this new new normal situation if you'll excuse me using that term brilliant um yeah and then there's uh, leading the leading the way um for, for the rest of the sector let's hope absolutely uh, so it's a, a, it's a great it's a great point um so which which moves us into more of the commercial zone perhaps with with that uh, alwyn who uh is um dealing more on the ground handling side the uh the the, the cargo which perhaps has seen a bit of a boost and uh, the uh but, but also people's bags when they, they need their bags as well when they go on holiday, right, Alan? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Um, if I could get back to what Ben was talking about. Uh, very, very interesting, Ben. Um, this kind of scenario, what we're talking about now with cleaning airports, cleaning aircraft, particularly the aircraft, um, obviously very, very useful for the small operators, the business jets. When you scale that up, that's where the problems start to creep into the equation, as you can probably imagine. Um, at the moment, from what I've read, the numbers of people actually traveling around are relatively few. Um, it tends to be more holiday makers rather than business people at this stage. And, and whilst the business jet can be cleaned quite quickly, once you start looking at something like a, a 737 or any of the, um, the low cost carrier type aircraft, I gather we're now looking at round about an hour to actually clean that aircraft before it takes off again. Um, now, as long as we have COVID-19 problems, then of course that hour is a huge chunk of time the aircraft has to sit on the ground. And it's particularly for low cost carriers like EasyJet, Ryanair, people like that. That's just unimaginable. Um, at the moment it's doable because there are fewer aircraft in the sky. But if we're looking at scaling up and getting more and more people on board and the confidence factor grows, which of course, Ben, with these, you know, adopting these techniques, that should happen. Mm. Um, clearly, there'll be more aircraft at airports, more people in departure lounges, and that's where the problems start occurring. But if I can move on to my, my particular interest, um, over the last two or three weeks, to be honest with you, there hasn't been much of newsworthy detail I've come across. Um, a lot of the, the press releases I see and the information I'm getting is about cargo flights, not surprisingly. Um, that's gone into abeyance a little bit now. Um, the, in, the initial impact of COVID seems to be on the decline, although it's not to say the problem isn't still there. So consequently, the cargo carriers are perhaps a little less busy, but they have been making the headlines. But basically, all they're doing is transporting cargo. It may be PPE, but that's what they do for a living. So there's no real news there. The one thing that caught my eye um, was about a week ago was AirBP, who is now supplying um, biofuel or sustainable aviation fuel, SAF as it's called in the business. Now, for those of you who aren't terribly up to date with this, um, biofuel and alternative fuels to Jet A uh, the technology goes back at least a decade, possibly longer now. Um, it's nothing new as such. There's been various companies have, uh, have come to market with options and there's been various processes involved to get away from just pure jet A. So the whole idea of recycling of environmentally friendly fuel is very much on the agenda and has been for some years. But it's only literally last week that I came across AirBP endorsing this and actually supplying it. Now, to me, that is a great step forward because AirBP is one of the key players when it comes to refueling in the business. So the fact that they're jumping on this bandwagon is excellent news. 
And I think it will give a boost to the industry. I know people are talking about electric planes and the future of battery aircraft, but that is a long way off if indeed it ever happens, um, especially on a large commercial scale. So in the interim, we're looking at biofuel and we're looking at green alternatives to Jet A. Uh, and this for me was a very, very positive step forward. And I'm looking forward to seeing that rolled out elsewhere in the world. So oh, that's my bit of news. Yeah. Have they increased the, the amount that they're supplying in Alwyn or is it? Is it... Um, I didn't get any actual numbers, yeah. but basically they're looking to take it on board and be a, a supplier of this. Obviously they don't make it themselves, no. it comes from a third party, but the fact is they're, they're you know, on the centre stage now with this and Airbnb has a huge presence around the world. So that's, that's really good. And, and has the crisis uh, been, been a catalyst to, to, to make this, make, speed up this process of moving to biofuel, do you think? I th I hesitate to say yes. I mean, this COVID crisis has encouraged all sorts of strange things um, in many respects, but this could well have been prompted by it. Um, I think the broader canvas is probably the fact that the uh, aviation sector is very concerned about its environmental footprint and consequently it is trying to do more now. And this is one further step it's taken. It certainly has brought into focus the crisis has brought into focus these environmental questions hasn't it and, and yeah absolutely absolutely well, realize how much emissions dropped and how much we can cut emissions if we all just stop doing things and so yeah that as we come back uh, yeah that the focus now it's great to hear that 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 is that is now uh, becoming more of a focus for bp and, and hopefully for others as well and and and, and um um uh, and doing things, and perhaps also it's the, the crisis has given a little pause, a little bit of breathing space to sort of think about, okay, maybe we can do things differently than maybe when it was business as usual, you just carry on and on and on with the same thing. Yeah, I think you're right, Tom. That is the mantra that is going around now. Yeah, people have to realise that things will carry on, but they will be different. And it's actually coming up with the so-called new norm, which we're reading a lot about. Um, it's having the adaptability and those that can adapt will survive for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, and interesting as well. I mean, you were making a point at the beginning there about the speed of, of cleaning and how that will be quite key for these turnaround times. Um, and uh, Izzy, I know in the last issue you were talking, uh, 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 we had a feature about some of the cleaning methods being used in business jets. Maybe we need to just speed them up. We need new technology that goes even faster. Can you see that happening? <laughs> uh, I have seen a lot of stories of um, charter companies and so on um, implementing these kind of surface treatments that last a long time um, to form a kind of barrier treatment. Uh, that's that's been there's de that's definitely been a noticeable trend. Um, in our next issue, actually, we're going to be looking at materials and how various materials, what their cleaning requirements are and how to make sure you're not compromising the, the luxury and the quality of the material um, and that you, you are looking after them well. Um, and I think also that's about communicating with customers that they, you know, shouldn't be using household cleaning wipes and stuff on, on this top end leather. Um, yeah. So that's definitely a consideration. That's great. Um, yeah, that's a good point. So perhaps it's not it's not about trying to get the cleaning cleaning done quicker. It's actually about having smarter materials that don't need cleaning quite so much. Um, well, it's you know we've I've definitely seen that that trend for those those surface treatments being um, implemented. So that's quite an interesting development. Um, if they can last like a year or more, and that's that's pretty incredible, really. Um, Was there anything else in the news that's, that's caught your eye recently? Um, I, uh, yeah, I saw this um, story from a um, Sinojet, which is a um, charter and management company in mainly in China. And they, um, obviously they had uh, quite an increase in inquiries around uh, from the January to April period. I think they had like over 2000 inquiries or something. Um, and obviously a lot of those are repatriation flights, but they are still seeing um, They're still seeing a lot of new in new entrants uh, a lot of um, technology and startup companies um, 
so what's interesting to me is thinking about the implications of, of having new new types of, of um, customers coming into business aviation and what their requirements are and whether it's purely about having you know uh, knowing who and how many people you are traveling with and also using the quieter airports and perhaps perhaps even getting uh, closer to your final destination by using a, a smaller airport um, and if those are their requirements rather than the the luxury of a private jet then does that have implications for for the design of those jets like might we see more kind of paired back interiors that are still offering those benefits i don't know yeah um, that's really interesting you can see you can imagine that you know perhaps business aviation and business jets may start to you know grab some of that market from the big carriers some of the business passengers some of the first class passengers might start moving off to to, to taking taking smaller and smaller planes for you know for, for the reasons that you mentioned do you see that happening i mean it's a possibility it's hard to know in the long term um exactly what their requirements are and if it's if the you know if the the cost of it is going to be prohibitive for them in the long term um which is why you know it might be interesting to look at reducing the cost of travel in some way um, but yeah i mean this is something that we get i'm going to be asking various people in the industry to for our next print issue um, cool. so stay tuned and we'll uh, yeah, we'll have on that we'll keep we'll keep our eyes on and ears on all parts of the industry um and um this um um, should this video should somehow be attached to the latest resilience report for August, which will have a a, a more in depth roundup of, uh, of of all the stories that we've been running over the over the last two weeks, um, and uh, there'll be more in September when we'll be back with uh, possibly with Izzy Ben and now and uh, and perhaps some of our other editors as well. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to join us then. Thank thank you all and uh, see you soon. <laughs>